Okay, then, here we are. Welcome to Lockbook, everybody. Uh, tonight's discussion, which is actually the second interview uh, that we're uh, doing, there's plenty more to come, apparently. Uh, Rob, is, I think, is just kind of lining them up. Um, Rob apologizes for not being here this evening, but he has to work. Damn that real world problems. Um, but, however, with me tonight, of course, is, um, well, there's me to begin with. Uh, then there's Katie. Katie, you've met before, uh, and what have you. She's done stuff for us in the past. Katie is also my daughter. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> if only. And with us tonight, of course, is is Ryan as well. So welcome, Ryan. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm well. <laughs> it's Monday. There. <laughs> That's about all I'm going to say to that. Actually, it wasn't a bad. It, it wasn't a bad Monday, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Um, right. So tonight's discussion, then, um, as we've been doing, is hidden disabilities, people that LARP with them, um, how systems have uh, helped or hindered. You know, in 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 that respect. You know, have they done a good job? Have they done a, a terrible job? Were they really not aware? Of things that were going on, um, etc., right. um, and that type of thing. So let's first of all kick it off with you, Ryan. Yeah, uh, what has been? Uh, well, first of all, I don't know if you want to tell uh, everybody what your particular um, hidden disability is. It's up mind. to you. Okay. Uh, so my my particular hidden disability is uh, fibromyalgia. So yeah, uh, basically just generalized pain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and Katie, I don't know whether or not you want to actually sort of uh, <laughs> tell people what yeah. yours are. Yeah, I also have fibromyalgia and costochondritis of the chest, nice. which is great. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, none of none of which she got from me. I get pain, but oh. not that bad. <laughs> I don't have any idea where I got it from. I just all of a sudden went hi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so Ryan, then, um, what sort of LARPs do you do to begin with? Let's, let, let's start with that. Uh, so I started LARPing, I, th I think, like two or three years ago. So I'm still yeah. fairly new to LARPing in general. Yeah, okay. Um, I started with a post-apocalyptic LARP. Nice. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it while <laughs> I was playing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and since I've moved on to a, uh, a dark fantasy LARP called Ascendia that I really enjoy. Nice. And uh, also another kind of post-apocalyptic LARP called Stormflux as well, which is also <laughs> really, really good. I see a pattern emerging. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so um, when you're doing these LARPs then, have they uh, been very good with your condition? Have they been um, not understanding, uh, you know, Talk us through some of the experiences that you had. So, um, having fibromyalgia in general is, uh, for the most part, I take medication that helps you know regulate my pain and uh, things like that. And um, so, for the most part, I can kind of like you know suffer through it. It's not a let's see how to put it. Um, basically. Uh, I'll have days that can be really bad and some days that are just great. And, yeah. um, fortunately I don't experience a ton of bad days thanks to my medication. <laughs> um, but you know, every now and then it happens. And when I'm at LARP, usually I'll end up just like sitting in places and just chatting with people. Um, uh, as far as the way the LARPs help, uh, or at least our understanding, um, Sometimes there's like armor requirements, and like if I'm needing to wear like heavier armor in order yeah. to, uh, you know, meet the requirements, sometimes they'll uh, basically like help alleviate that by allowing me to wear like fake armor or things like that, you know, like um, re resin armor or um, foam armor, things like that, um, that, which helps, you know, take the pain off my body because I'm not wearing as much, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. nice. Yeah, so so they're they're more than happy for you to use a a physical representation of that armor without it actually having to be plate. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I 
I went around in plate armor for a little while at the Dark Fantasy game, and I think I did that for like a game or two, and I was like, I, I realized very shortly after that there's I can't I can't do that. Yeah, and, mistakes uh, were made. <laughs> yeah, yes, very much so. Possibly mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I suppose like like everything else, you you one hundred percent want to be yes, you know, let's go for it, you know, and then you try it and you go, oh, let's not do that again. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, so, how have the LARPs that you've been to, um, how have they helped you? You know, apart from uh, allowing you to wear fizz rep armor uh, rather than the real stuff, etc. Is there any other ways that they that they've kind of helped you, or or, you, or even hindered you? You know, gone like like we, we we literally just cannot do anything with this. Um, I would say that the first startup that I went to was uh, the site that I went to was pretty large, so oftentimes I would have to walk up and down the site, and eventually got to the point where I just couldn't really do that. Um, yeah. So one of the downsides was that. You know, sometimes I wouldn't be involved in some of the stories that I would want to be involved in. And so that was kind of a, I would say, a negative that ended up coming out of it. Um, the other LARPs that, I've, that I'm that i now actively playing in um, are much more accommodating as far as that goes. Uh, they will happily yeah. bring story to me. Uh, not like... Oh, not like, they're like, they're like, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not like demanding them to like... Hey, bring this to me because I can't go. It's it's more along the lines of like, uh, they can put the story in a more centralized area. And right. Yeah. It it might be because the sites that I am at now are much smaller, but also they are, I would say, better about, um, you know, trying to trying to include people as a general, but also people with disabilities. Right. That's that's very very good, Katie. How, how about you? What sort of experiences have you had? I I know some of the tales, but I can't really... <laughs> um, <laughs> well, as obviously you know, Dad, I've been laughing since I was born. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's only really been the last, let's say, about three or four years where my fibro has really come to the surface. Yeah. Um. There are. A few laps that I go to. I go to Festival Lap, Empire. I go to Dark Colony, which is a post-apocalyptic, and then Ascendancy, which is a fantasy one. Um, fantasy one and the da- and the post-apocalyptic are run by the same person. Okay. People, uh, they are very very understanding of what I have, mm. and that some days I can run in and hit people until my heart's content <laughs> um, with a hammer that's almost twice the size of me. <laughs> <laughs> but other times, they also understanding that I physically can't. So yeah. in a way to make me still have fun as a character, they have helped me pick up other skills that I can do sitting down. Um, you know, people can come to me and ask me for help. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, things you know and all the sites we go to they make sure that the toilets are easily accessible um yeah and the one where we where we camp they always make sure that it's i i'm kind of camped close to the bathroom so i haven't got yeah yeah long way to walk in the dark right you know um i mean empire in general is very good with anybody with any type of disability whether it's you know you're in a wheelchair or you've got what i've got or you've got um autism or whatever yeah yeah. there's a group of people there to help with that and there are uh ramps and disabled toilets and there are even um, vans that help you back and forth if the weather's awful all right there there we go So, so so uh So Ryan, Ryan, of of, of any of the laughs you've been to, been that accommodating? The Empire is very accommodating with that. Um, no, I don't think I've had anything that accommodating. Um, the they they do have like readily accessible bathrooms and things like that, but that's more the fact that the site is you know just designed in that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I don't know. I don't think I've ever had that much of a <laughs> so that, that does sound pretty nice. Yeah, it's a, an empire are really, uh, really lovely that way. They think about every type of situation that person can be in. Okay. You know? oh, all right, then, Ryan, here's a, here's a question for you then. Um, 
what I mean, <laughs> if you if you heard some of what what Arcadia said, <laughs> what what are the ways that LARP organizers, in 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 your opinion, do you think could help people with disabilities and the hidden ones as well? I know it's a um, question just to throw you out there, but there we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the things that is really important, especially for uh, invisible disabilities, is to recognize, well, so basically like go into a site when you approach a site for your game or whatever Yeah. to look at it from a perspective of somebody with a disability, look at it trying to, you know, determine whether or not this site is good for a person who is disabled. Because yeah. um, if, if it isn't, then obviously you're going to be restricting your uh, disabled players or restricting your game from disabled players, whether yeah. it's intentional or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that, that would be really important. And that's like just when you're, you know, beginning as a director. Um, the other thing uh, that I've experienced a lot of um, being in America and having to deal with a lot of the American healthcare, um, a lot of people have difficulty, I think, recognizing. Um, invisible illnesses as being significant i understand yes. yeah okay. kind of the same over yeah. here to be honest that's fair uh yeah it's it's i mean like i'm on facebook groups and things like that and like i can i am physically able to run if i run around though i'm going to regret it <laughs> at the very least the next day yes <laughs> yeah so I, I will tell people like oh yeah that that uh, thing that you're telling me is great, but I, for people who can run, and then people are like, "Oh, you can run, just try harder." I'm just like, uh, well, yeah. well yeah, that's not my I, favorite thing. I can run yeah. today. Tomorrow, yeah. however, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. It 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 is it is one of the more difficult things, isn't isn't it? You know, if if <laughs> if you had an arm off or, or whatever, blah blah, something physical people could see they yeah. can go ah right yeah. so you know right he's he's got two legs off i mean you know yeah there's there's no way you can run unless he's got prosthetic legs and and what yeah. the rest of it yeah. and probably run quicker than us and on some of the bloody legs i've seen but <laughs> you know, <I> know. <laughs> with as you say with the hidden stuff it's difficult to um to kind of get over the point of look right now I'm okay. Yes. In an hour's time, I may be flat on my back. Yeah. And, yep. you, you know, you're not going to get anything out of me. It's simple as that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, it could even be like, I could hang up from you now, and then for the next two days, I could just be like, well, I can't do anything today. <laughs> and yeah. all I've done is sit here and talk to you. You know, it's, it's not even sometimes the physical things that tire you out and make you hurt. Sometimes mm. it's even being here hundred percent mentally that tires you out and makes you go, actually no, I need to take a break and I need to step back because yeah. the tablets have so many awful side effects as well as <laughs> trying to help you that I'm constantly wanting to yeah. sleep. <laughs> I know I like yeah. to nap anyway, but <laughs> you know, so my brain is constantly going, Is it bedtime yet? Is it bedtime yet? Is it bedtime yet? when I'm trying to do something like this or apply for a job, whatever, I'm so tired afterwards that I'm kind of like, well, what can I do? Right. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yes. And as you say, who doesn't love a good nap? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like a good nap just because of my age. It's as simple as that. But <laughs> So I I I I I'm taking away from this that that on the whole, you know, even though you know not going as as far as some of the laps of, of that the Katie has gone to, you know, with the with buses to take people to the rest of it and, uh, and 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 what have you. They are um, quite an established big group, though, aren't they? Yeah, really? yeah, they are, they are. Um, but on the whole. So far, it seems to be a fairly positive experience. Um, yeah. 
you know, and a fairly inclusive one. There's 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 been some blips along the way. Last time when we talked to to Susan, for instance, she was saying that the organizer hadn't realised that gravel would be a massive problem. Oh, gravel is awful. Yeah, it's like the the one I know that you can't help the ground when you're on a farm. You yes, know, right. You're camping on a farm, you're gonna get potholes. You're gonna get whatever. Right. But in Empire, if it's too dry, <laughs> the um, the, the I can't think what it's called. It's like the wooden chips that they put on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dust flies everywhere. So trying to yeah. concentrate with a stick and be able to see is a nightmare. And then when it rains, the mud turns into clay. So if you need a walking stick, you're like trying to pull it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, so like, you can't win really either way. You need it to be damp. <laughs> you see, what you need is a, is an all track vehicle, and then. <laughs> 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 one point once that the weather was um that bad that they had to actually tow one of my friends in a wheelchair they had to put a tow and hitch on her and, and tow her up to the end of the thing because she couldn't physically get a wheelchair oh, in the mud. No. <laughs> so i let's let's sort of summarize this a bit then so uh, as 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 far as as you two are concerned more than anything else um is if LARP organizers or, or directors, I think you, you you call them in the states, isn't it? Uh, we just call them we just call them organizers, people that organize things. Um, <laughs> if they sort of find out, uh, you know, when when, when someone says to them, "Look, I, I I do have this sort of disability. Here it is," you know, if they come to you, my idea is if they came to you and say, "Right, what what can we do to help you?" Yeah. That that would be a, a major plus, wouldn't it? To to just put everybody, you know, and then and then you know you could say to yourself, well, there's not a lot you can do um, in 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 that respect, yeah. But I want to make like, you aware yeah. of it and and right. And I appreciate I, I would appreciate a director or organizer coming out to me and reaching out to me and being like, hey, I recognize that you have this illness, like. Thing, what can I do to help? And yes, while there isn't much that they can do, it's it's just nice to have somebody ask, you know. Yeah, I I agree. And again, what I'm discovering, certainly in in the LARPing community, uh, we seem to be sort of way more open about these sorts of things. You know, yeah. uh, if you, if you want to ask me a question, ask me a question. I'll I'll answer it. I think <laughs> you that's know, the main issue though is that people are too scared to ask questions. Yes. Because yep. you're always taught, like, I hope this doesn't come out, out wrong, but you're always taught with that the, if people look different or act different, like, you know, if someone's got autism or Down syndrome or something, you're not to ask them about it or you're not right. to stare at them or look at them. Now, now I would say that's a very British thing. <laughs> it is a very British <laughs> that, thing. That is a very British thing. It's, it's also a bit of an American one as well, because um, yeah. I, I know that when I was younger, that was a thing that it's like, hey, don't, you know, don't stare at them, don't look at them type of mentality. Yeah. And, and lots yeah. of people still have that mentality. So yeah. I agree. People won't just come and go, oh, by the way, I have noticed that you've not been yourself type thing or, you know, is there something that I can do? You know, I, I've had to kind of tell people and then they've gone, oh, well, what can I do? rather yeah. than yeah. them coming to me because and, just yeah. because of that yeah right and that also takes energy from us because exactly. it's to, to have to be like well okay this is the reason and have to explain all of that it's just like oh because you're doing it for the 30th 40th 100th time you know yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of get a t-shirt printed you know <laughs> yeah hello i have a disability <laughs> ask me about it <laughs> <laughs> and, and and just list the symptoms just <laughs> that'd be great just just read that yeah very well. <laughs> just over and have all of it on the back <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a great idea that's that's got to work that's got to work i mean as 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 i mentioned before i i have a condition as well uh where <laughs> i literally have to live in the goldilocks zone is what i call it because I can't, I can't get too hot. I can't get too cold. I can't get too hungry. I can't get too full. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> not, <free>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not hungry. Yeah, I can't get. There's, there's a whole bunch of things, right? I, I and I literally have to live in this little bubble, <laughs> right? It doesn't work. 
right? Life's yeah. life, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Um, right. But if if I go too too far on the scale, of the one end, it's like, oh, here we go, Oomph, uh, and that's it. I'm out for the count. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Gonna reset him by lifting his legs up. Literally re- reset me by lift, lifting my legs up. I come round and then I go, oh, oh, that was a good one. Should we carry on? You know, um, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> bit, you know, it's biz- bizarre thing I've got. But literally, I have to live in this Goldilocks zone. But as I say, it doesn't work because life is life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and if I if I if I I'd have to live in this hermetic bubble where I did this all day. Yeah. I mean, you could read, right? That wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, you know. You can set your bubble down in front of the telly. Exactly, and then you know, and then forget to eat, and then go, oh, oh yeah, something. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> so, is there anything else anybody would like to add now to this discussion before we wrap this up? Um. Just, I would say to directors and organizers, just, you know, some people may not want to talk about these things. Sometimes a person with a disability doesn't want to uh, talk about the fact that they have a disability. When I first learned that I had fibromyalgia, um, it took me a long time to really accept my limitations. Yeah. So I often would push myself too far. But I think it's important to be aware of those things, but, you know, do what you can. Ask if you can help. If a player's like, yeah. no, I'm good, don't push it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. reach out if you can. And it's it's appreciated. Yeah. yeah. And, I, I, and I would say that that just nails it on, on the head. You know, it, it, with me as well, when people ask me, am I fine? The answer's always yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you now. You know, yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> you know the answer is always yes those people that know me know the signs <laughs> the signs are usually this uh staring off into the distance etc when, when you stop talking when I stop talking. <laughs> oh as if i talk a lot anyway <laughs> the, <laughs> so uh Ryan, uh, thank you very much for, for, for being part of this. Um, this is going to be a, a, a whole series, as I said. There's plenty more people as well. We've, we've got an, another interview coming up uh, where they have children that have sort of uh, hidden disabilities, etc. And, and how that, that kind of affects what they can do and the LARPs they can go to, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, we, 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 according to Rob, we, we have this list. Of people that that just basically want to want to come on and talk about this, so this is marvelous. I don't know how how long this series is going to be, but we'll do them all. Stuff it. Why not? Definitely. Yeah, you know. So you know <laughs> it, 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 exactly. Um, so, look, if you want to kind of help out the show uh, and and help us out, right? Then pop across to coffee.com or Kofi. I don't know how you're going to pronounce this, right? But it's ko-fi.com forward slash book and buy us a coffee because coffee keeps this machine running, all right? Yes. It's as simple as that. You know, as, as you can tell, coffee keeps this machine running. Coffee also keeps that machine running over there and I'm betting coffee also keeps that machine running <laughs> over there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, pop across there. I mean, if you have been watching this as well, thank you very much. Don't forget to tell people all about us. Even people you might randomly meet in the street. You never know. They might want to watch this. Who knows? (laughs) The other things you can do, subscribe to the channels, go to the Facebooks, just literally search for LARP book and you will find us everywhere it's as simple as that right uh so again it only sort of really sort of uh from my point of view again to thank ryan and to thank katie for being here this evening uh and i think it's going to be a uh, a goodbye from all of us what do you reckon yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Bye. bye and now i've got to press the button to finish this there we go bye <laughs> <laughs> so if you have been watching thank you very much do not forget to click the subscribe and to hit that little bell to see when more things come out. So for now, it's goodbye from me.